All right, so someone on my Discord asked if I could kind of walk him through how you add a pagination to a MERN stack application. I'm going to build off of this existing MERN to-do list application. I have a video about how I built this if you want to check it out. But I guess the goal is we want to put some buttons down here where you can kind of go through the pages. And obviously you can get more complex and add like page numbers and stuff. But I'm going to try to keep this simple for this little video. So the first thing that you kind of need to do to support pagination is on your back end, you have to basically allow a user to pass in what page that they want to fetch. Okay, so typically if your database has, you know, 100 million records or a million records, you don't want to fetch back all that data at once. You want to basically limit how much can come back and then only show the user a certain amount. Um, it's, it, that's good for UX and it's also good for your database because you don't want to be overloaded by doing too many queries of too much data. All right, so if you're not really familiar with this API, I basically have a router here. This is Express, and it has an endpoint for getting the to-dos, right? This line 14 is how you can get all the to-dos in our API. Now, the issue with this, again, is it's going to fetch every single piece of data that's in my database, and if my database is big, that's a lot of data, right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to add pagination to your query. So right here, to-do model, this is a mongoose model. Dot find is a method you can do to find all of the entries that are in that like collection basically and what we want to do is we want to still find every single record but there's some additional options you can pass to this find method right so you can the first one is like what you want to query for for an example if you wanted to find all to-dos that have a certain amount of text in it or all the completed to-dos you can do that here but we're going to keep that an empty object so we get back everything the second one is i think projections we're going to put null because we just want it to still just return the exact same data that comes back from the back end but the third argument could be an options, okay? So we're gonna put a skip, and I'm gonna leave it a zero and a limit of two for right now. So what this does is basically, we are saying when we do this query, give us back only two results. And then the skip is basically your pagination. So page zero means give us the first two results. Skip of one means give us the results starting on um, index two and three. Um, it makes more sense if I, if I just go ahead and put a constant here. So I'm going to say const page size is equal to 2. And we're going to basically say limit it to the page size. And then every time you skip, we are going to basically allow this endpoint to be passed a query string. So if I show you on Postman, we want to allow a user to pass in like money sign page equals here so that they can choose what page of data that they want back. So I'm going to go ahead and say const page equals rec.query. This is how you can get that query string from the URL that's from Postman that I just showed. And we want to basically say, depending on the page the user has tried to request, um, I might need to parse it. I'm going to parse that page and I'm going to times it by the page size. Okay. Um, also, if this thing is not defined, we probably want to set it equal to zero by default. So this is going off the page. Let me just go ahead and indent this a little bit. So now we have an endpoint that we can actually pass in a page number and we should get back only the results for that page assuming we don't have an error. So notice that we get A and B here. And if I were to do page one, C and D. So there's different results depending on the different pages and page sizes. And then the last page has just a D. So just to kind of further exemplify, if you change page, page size to four, go back and search for page zero, click send, we should get back four results here, one, two, three, four, and then the second page should have one result because there's only five items total. So the first page had four, the second page has one. Some APIs allow you to actually specify like a, a limit. So I could do like a limit of 10 here or 100. Typically in the back end, you'd have to cap that off at a certain amount because you don't want a user to search like a limit of a million because then you're back to like issues with fetching too much data. All right, so let's go back to page size to two. And in the UI, I want to show you how you can kind of hack something together to get this working. Um, so again, we are using React Query, but you can kind of take these ideas and apply them to whatever approach you are using. So with React Query, we kind of want to add some buttons here and also keep track of some state. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a page state so that we can kind of know what page the user is trying to request. 
let me make sure I auto import that. I'm going to set it equal to page zero for default. So when the page first loads, we get back the first page or index zero, I guess. Um, and then we're going to add some buttons down here. I'm going to say button on click. I'm going to say it's a function that's called set page plus one. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say previous page of page minus one. And for this previous page, we're going to disable it. Disabled when page is equal to zero, okay? Because if we're on the, ver for the first page, like we don't want them to be able to go back to a negative number, right? And you can do the same thing here. We're not going to cover in that tutorial how you can like cap it at the max pages. Let me log in. So now if you notice that we only get back A and B, and like I showed you in Postman, that was the results that were existing in page one. Um, these are kind of swapped. I should probably, I should probably swap these. These look kind of messed up. Uh, let me go up here and save that. So now if I click next page, that should hopefully fetch the next set of pages, but we haven't implemented that yet. If I click it, it doesn't do anything. Um, and what we want to do is since we're using a React query, we can actually tell this query to be scoped to the page number. Okay. So the first argument of use query, you pass in like a collection of the things you want to build up your query key. So if we just put page here, we're going to get a unique key based on to do's in the page number. So if I save this, basically behind the scenes, every time page changes, it's going to just call this query and refetch the data. So I think one thing that we're missing is we have this method here for getting the pages from the API, but we haven't supported a page query number here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a second argument called page. And then I'm going to say question mark page is equal to page like this. So now it's going to actually fetch back the pages from the API correctly. So let's make sure we pass that in here. I could go ahead and say page and let's try that out in the UI. I think this might work. If not, we might have to do one more thing. So log in, I'm going to click next page and I'll click it again and notice that we get back the results that are for that individual page. All right, so this is kind of how you can do pagination. Um, again, I'm using a React query, so it might not fully translate to what you're trying to do. But again, if you want to do your own special thing, like you could literally just use a use effect right here, and you want to listen to when a page changes, and you can call this same method here like this and do something like this. Oh, I need to do, let, do something like this. Um, set to do's. All right, so same concept, right? We're not using a React query here, but um, every time you change that page state variable, we're invoking this effect callback, which is going to refetch that data from the back end and then set up our to-dos array. I did have to kind of add some special stuff that React query was taken care of, but the same approach using a different like request method. So I hope this kind of makes sense. I kind of showed you how you can add pagination to your MERN uh, back end, your Express slash Mongoose back end. And then how you can set up your UI to actually fetch different pages based on a page state. And of course, you can take this a step further and you can like render out page buttons. Like you could do like button uh, one, two, three, uh, dot, dot, dot or something. But to do this, you need to have your backend basically tell you how much data is in their backend, how much, how many pages you have. And then you'd have to render out buttons depending on how many pages. If you have like a thousand pages and you have to redesign like what page numbers you actually want to display, it gets really complex. So I'm not going to show it here, but just keep that in mind that uh, pagination can get kind of complex depending on how much data you have. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment and be sure to subscribe and also join my discord if you want to talk to me directly or ask me any type of questions. Have a good day and a happy coding.